Does the world need a transition to clean energy and fossil fuel divestment? When even a country literally sitting on oil and gas doesn't want to use them, the answer seems obvious. In November 2015, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, as well as the ruler of Dubai, launched the Dubai Clean Energy Strategy. The ambitious goal is to make Dubai the city with the lowest carbon footprint on the planet by 2050. To achieve this, 75% of all electricity needs will be met by solar power plants, with the remaining 25% coming from other clean sources of energy. To understand the scale of the project, in 2020, solar energy accounted for only 10%. Let's figure it out. One of the pillars of the strategy became the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park, the world's largest solar park designed to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by over 6.5 million tons annually. The solar farm uses a range of photovoltaic and concentrated solar power technologies. The facility also includes an innovative research center, serving as one of the largest research and development hubs in the region. The construction of this huge solar power station, located 50 kilometers from Dubai, was divided into five phases. In the first phase, a small 13 megawatt solar power station was built in the desert in 2013. However, in the second phase, its capacity increased to 200 megawatts by 2017. The third phase was completed in 2020, adding an additional 800 megawatts. While the first three phases were conventional solar farms, the fourth phase included another 917 megawatts of facilities with different solar energy technologies. Among them, 217 megawatts are provided by traditional photovoltaic elements, while another 600 megawatts are generated using cylindrical parabolic concentrators. The remaining 100 megawatts are produced by tower-type solar concentrators with a central receivers. In both non-traditional solar technologies, sunlight is focused onto a high heat capacity liquid reservoir. Heated to several hundred degrees, the heat transfer fluid drives turbines through a series of heat exchangers, generating electricity. In the middle of 2022, the fifth phase was put into operation, once again adding 930 megawatts from conventional photovoltaic elements. Huge fields of solar panels, with a total capacity of 2860 megawatts are spread out in the desert. Interestingly, due to a storage capability of up to 15 hours, the plant can operate both day and night. The energy generated during the day is sold to consumers when needed. Currently, discussions are underway regarding applications for the next phases of the project. However, it is already known that by 2030, the solar park will reach a capacity of 5 gigawatts. In the next stage of construction, energy production is planned to double through the inclusion of the world's tallest concentrated solar power tower. Standing at about 260 meters, approximately 60 meters shorter than the Eiffel Tower, it will use about 70,000 heliostats, orientable mirrors to convert sunlight into thermal energy and store it. But that's not all. Why limit solar energy collection to the area of one giant power station, even if it is the largest in the world? After all, harnessing solar power in the Emirates can be done virtually anywhere. Therefore, the Dubai Clean Energy Strategy envisions that by 2030, solar panels will be installed on every rooftop. Furthermore, by the end of 2019, the total capacity of installations used in private households and commercial organizations had already reached 125 megawatts. The goal of the project is that solar panels on houses would produce 5,000 megawatts of energy by 2030 the same amount as the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park. However, Dubai's solar power stations also face challenges. This is because the climate that makes solar energy work so well in the United Arab Emirates has a downside. The first problem encountered at the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Solar Park is the constant need to clean the solar panels of dust. For Dubai's arid and desert landscape, sand and dust storms are common. Uncleaned panels can lose between 25 to 40 percent of their power. Traditionally, water is used for cleaning, but for the Emirates, this is a precious resource. Therefore, Arab scientists are working on alternative methods, creating special anti-pollution coatings. In 2022, a group of researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology introduced a special conductive layer that can be applied to solar panels. It generates static electricity and repels dust particles. Furthermore, maintenance extends to other infrastructure, if dust settles on power lines and becomes wet due to light rain, it can lead to short circuits. This occurred in Iran in 2017, leaving an entire region without electricity for a day. 
The second challenge is the extremely high temperatures. Solar Park engineers are constantly testing new materials and technologies to ensure the effective operation of solar panels under such conditions, and they have succeeded. The average efficiency of solar panels in the world is 16 to 18 percent. The panels in Solar Park in Dubai using polycrystalline silicon achieve an efficiency of 22 percent. Also, research is currently exploring the potential of a new material, perovskite solar cells. They could boost efficiency up to 33 percent. However, even such innovations do not solve all the problems. In high temperature conditions, materials used to protect panels such as silicon still degrade faster. While solar panels in Europe can last for 25 years, in Dubai their lifespan is reduced to 15 years. Essentially, this is the price of efficiency in solar energy in this region. But what about the profitability of solar energy? Is it truly efficient or is it just another expensive toy for the sheikhs? The United Arab Emirates became the first country to break the three cents per kilowatt hour barrier for electricity. There were speculations that the government was secretly subsidizing solar power plants to achieve such a low cost. But this information was disproved. Solar energy in the Emirates is indeed cheaper to produce electricity. It is worth noting that the cost of solar energy has decreased by 50% in the last five years and is the lowest in the world. How was this achieved? In reality, there are many factors. One of the most important factors is the reduction in the cost of solar panels themselves. Increased demand has triggered supply, and the market is saturated with manufacturers, including major ones. As a result, panels that used to cost more than $500 are available in the Emirates for $100 each. Another significant factor is the cost of financing. The Sheikhs provide loans to companies implementing projects at record low interest rates. The third factor is that in the UAE, expenditures on research, construction, and development are lower than in Europe and in the United States. The fourth factor is longer contracts. In the United Arab Emirates, utility companies enter into 25-year electricity supply agreements compared to the global standard of 15 to 20 years. This provides solar power developers with more time to recoup their initial investments. Some of these factors may not be entirely competitive, but they are certainly not government subsidies. The Dubai example demonstrates how competitive solar energy can be compared to fossil fuels, which currently cost an average of four to six cents per kilowatt hour. Moreover, there is no need to directly invest taxpayers' money into unprofitable projects. Creating favorable conditions is often sufficient. Essentially, none of the factors mentioned above is unattainable in other countries, except for labor costs in more developed states and the fact that the Emirates have the highest number of sunny days in the world. However, even if the cost of electricity is twice as high as that of the sheikhs, it would still be competitive compared to fossil fuels. This means that even in relatively favorable climatic conditions, other countries can and should develop similar projects. By developing practical solutions such as trees with photovoltaic leaves, solar-powered street lamps, and sidewalks with solar panels, a city chooses its path. While Dubai is paving its way to a more sustainable future, the UAE as a whole still heavily relies on traditional sources of energy. However, they are making significant steps in the desired direction through strategic investments. In 2021, the solar park accounted for 3 to 5% of Dubai's total energy supply. Before this, Dubai was almost entirely dependent on natural gas, and the UAE itself still relied on fossil fuels. Nevertheless, the country is striving to make more environmentally friendly changes in its energy strategy 2050, which aims to reduce carbon emissions from electricity production by 70%. The sheikhs have proven that cheap solar energy is not a miracle. All that is needed is government support, innovation, and more sunny days. Write in the comments what you think about the development of alternative energy sources in the United Arab Emirates. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you later.